Well, I needed a job, and the job was there, and I thought, okay, I could go there and practice medicine, and, and you know, I got there's a doc there, and blah, blah, but it didn't work out that way. I, I had to leave. I, I couldn't do that. Uh, I'm not going to risk my license or my DEA number. Why did you feel like I know, those see, were things were, were being at risk? Uh, I was encouraged not to release patients when they were getting ready to be released. Well, you got a patient, for instance, I'll give you an example. A patient comes in there, had been in a motor vehicle accident, they've got a strained neck, uh, muscle strains, obviously, that's not a hard diagnosis to make. Uh, you take care of them, you give them some pain medication and, and give them some physical therapy and get them better and it's time to release them. Well, when it came time to release them, I was discouraged from releasing them. So you keep making money off them. Absolutely. Uh, there were time, there was a couple of times when I felt like a patient needed to be referred to a specialist, uh, an orthopedic surgeon, and uh, I was chastised for that. By whom? By Patrick. What? And I was told I was told that if you send them to those people, we'll never see them again. Mr. Reynolds was pretty paranoid about money. Now I understand that as an administrator. The administrator needs to be concerned about uh, money. That's the function of a good administrator, part of it. Uh, but it can get out of hand. And when you first meet him, he seemed to be a pleasant fellow, but uh, after a short while, the little hairs on the back of his neck start standing up when you talk to him. And it does, doesn't take much to didn't take much to really touch him off when it came to talking about money.